Ministries Seeking God to impart nations Welcome to the e-church again, um, where we are seeking to know about the kingdom of God, where he recommends us to seek him first at, as our first priority. So last time we were talking about how to define the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of heaven? So today we are at our second session. And before we read the word, I would like to pray with you that the Lord may give us, give me utterance that I may be able to talk to your spirit and that you may be also able to receive this word in your spirit. That you should have the understanding according to the, uh, the preaching of the message, that you get the understanding of the Holy Spirit in your spirit. Sometimes we hear from our mind and we don't understand exactly what the Lord meant. So may you bow your head and as we pray all together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace to say thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to share about your word. Thank you for all the people that are watching and listening to your message. I don't know them, but you know them. I pray that your Holy Spirit touch them wherever they are, that through this message, they will gain something from your kingdom to understand and to have clarity concerning the matters of your kingdom. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me utterance that I may be able to speak accurately your word and for the glory of your holy name. We give you praise. We say thank you, our Lord and our Savior, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for sending us forth to the nations. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. So thank you for giving me your time that I may be able to speak or plant a word as a seed in your heart. So last time we were talking about seeing the floods, the streams, the wind that were blowing and we could see houses sinking. We could, we could see mountains splitting and taken by the flood. And as I said last time, I understand more than ever that whoever is not putting his life, his household on the foundation of Jesus Christ is like in a house that is set on, on a sinking sand. Though the time has come whereby everything we believed in Everything we set our eyes upon is, will be collapsing. Systems are collapsing. Big mountains are collapsing. And they are all taken by the flood. This is yet a spiritual meaning. So as we are reaching you, we pray that wherever you are, that you solidify your household and put your trust and your belief on Jesus Christ, who is the rock. And these are apostolic teachings. Why? Because we are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophet, Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. So we are here to talk about the doctrine of Jesus Christ, his teachings, and to set priorities of our lives uh, as never before. That we should seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, 
and all the rest shall be added unto you. So I spoke about additions, but I also spoke about the kingdom. So if we have to leave everything and to set our priority to seek the kingdom of God, then we need to understand what is the kingdom of God. So Jesus was trying to explain by parables, as I said, and today we are going to move to a second parable whereby he was trying to teach them so that they may be enlightened to know uh, what is the kingdom of heaven. So allow me to read in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, again, from verse 44 to 31. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed a good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the terrors also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have terrors? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, least while you gather up the terrors, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the terrors and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So Jesus was now uh, talking this parable um, in the area of agriculture because he was uh, probably talking to farmers and so many people who came. So he wanted to explain the kingdom. As I said, uh, it's a spiritual kingdom. So he wanted to explain the kingdom, the spiritual kingdom by things they know, by the things they can understand to illustrate what he, he meant by the kingdom of God. So he gave an example of a field again. And this time around, we are going to see that the seed he's, he was talking about is people. It is people. While he started with the, uh, the parable of the sowers, and the sowers were sowing seeds. In that context, the seed was the word of God. But this time around, God is talking about the seed, the people who have received the seed and have become themselves like seeds. So Jesus said that a man sowed a good seed in the field. But when they were sleeping, when they slept, the enemy arose. While they were sleeping, he also planted a bad seed. And I'm sure the next day, they didn't know what was going on until after a while. Then they realized that there were two sorts of seeds. The wheat that was re represented the good seed and the tares. So we can also talk about the tares, we can also talk about the weed. It's almost the same thing. The weed and the wheat, they almost look alike. And when they were planted, no one knew what was going on. It's just like in the world where we are now, the two seeds are operating. But we don't know yet what is going on. It's as if everything is okay. It's as if we are waiting for the good seed to come up to sprout. But suddenly, when it sprouted, they were shocked to see that there were two sorts of crops. And they were wondering. So they went back to the master and asked, Master, how come you planted a good seed of wheat? And now we see that there is another sort of of plant which is the weed and then the master said yes the enemy came and planted 
the bad seed. So they were like, mm, so sh shall we go and uproot the wheat from the wheat? And the master said, no, you can't uproot the weeds because you be, when, when you be uprooted, the bad seed, the weeds, the tares, you have the risk of uprooting at the same time the wheat. So you should let them grow till the time of harvest. And the time of harvest, I will tell the reapers to go and start by removing the tares, the weeds, the bad seeds, and then bind them in bundles that they will be put into fire. And then you'll be able to collect now the harvest, the crops from the wheat. So now, the message of today is that the Lord was trying to explain the kingdom of God. And this leads me to what he told me, that whatever you see, whatever you hear. So the time has come whereby we need to detect what is real to what is fake. What is the original to what is the imitation? What is authentic to what is fake? You need to have spiritual eyes to be able to detect what is weeds and what is wheat. So probably the Lord chose the example of weeds and wheat because it's very obvious that these two crops, they almost look alike. So if you don't have spiritual eyes, or if you are not a farmer, to know exactly how the weeds look and how the wheat look, you will be afraid, you will be shocked to see that you can harvest something that is not important for you. Or when you are trying to remove the bad, the bad seed, you, you, you will not be able to know which one is the weeds and which one is the wheat. So even when I was just doing the research of these two crops, I realized two things. Scientifically proven that the, the seed, the system of the roots, the system of the roots of the weeds, they are very strong. They have a very strong root system. The roots are stronger. They, they are more rooted even than the wheat, the, the, uh, the, the roots of the wheat. In a sense that the roots of the wheat are very delicate. But the roots of the weeds, they are deep and very well structured roots. So now this can show us why the Lord asked them not to uproot the weeds. Having strong structure of roots and the weeds having delicate roots, obviously we lose the good crops. That's why he asked them to wait until the time of harvest. So today, what is the teaching? How will, it, will we now know the sons of the kingdom? Who are the real people of the kingdom? So many messages around. Which message is accurate? The Bible will let us know which things of the kingdom that will let us know this is the will of God, this is reality, this is fake, this is pretense, or this is from God. This is the teachings of today. We need to pray and ask God to give us spiritual eyes. We need to pray God to give us discernment. We need to pray God to give us understanding in the word so that because the word will be the one to explain that what are the good seed. So the explanation here is that the master who sowed the good seed is Jesus Christ. The field is the world. Now, how will we know the difference between the weeds and the wheat? Actually, when I was checking on the pictures of the weeds, and I saw that the weeds, they are tall 
and upright. They are very tall, representing all sorts of pride, tall and upright. But the wheat, it's growing, but because of so many fruits, it starts bending because of the heaviness of the fruits. So this will lead us in the word of God that says in Matthew uh, verse 7 from 16 to 23 that you will know them by their fruits. Which, which crops do you need to feed your spirit with? You will know the weeds, the wheat from the weeds by their fruits. And now because it's a spiritual meaning, you will then ask, what are the fruits? We will know, we'll know them by their fruits. So what are the fruits? The fruits, obviously, when you look at people of God, when you look at believers, you will know them by the fruits. So today, uh, the weeds represent, the wheat represent the children, no? the children of God, the sons of God. The weeds represent the children of the devil. Now, talking about the believers, the believers are children of God, but not all the believers are children of God. So even when we say that we are Christians, we still need to check. There are some Christians that bear fruits, some Christians that don't bear fruits. Those Christians who bear fruits, you see them in their character. You see the fruit of the Spirit in them. You see them full of love, always joyful, always with the peace of God. This is not the peace of this world. I'm talking about the peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace and the joy that does not come by the good or a bad news, a permanent peace as a result of having the Prince of Peace within themselves. So they will be full of peace, they will be full of joy, even when they are going through tough situation, challenges, but these challenges will not take away their joy. So these are the things that will make you know that for sure this is the wit, the love of God manifesting, then the joy of God, the peace of God, and then long suffering or patient. They will be patient. They will be waiting upon the Lord. You know, many a time we just like to see things that comes up quickly. And then when they are taking time, we are like, oh Lord, oh Lord, why is it taking long? No, the fruit of patience is a very good fruit that the Lord loves so much. So patience. Then you check their kindness. You check the goodness. You check the gentleness. You check their faithfulness. You check the self-control. Those are the fruits that will manifest and that will make you know that for sure this is a child of God. This is a son of God. The fruit will manifest. In the epistle of Apostle John, one of the epistles, this is an apostle that I love so much. Actually, in the Bible, they are recalling him as an apostle of love. He also said, the children of God are those who live, those who practice righteousness. You know, righteousness is not a one-day business. Righteousness is something that we need to practice day after day, day after day. So the true children of God are those who have committed their lives to practice righteousness. And Apostle John says again that those who are children of God are those who love, who love people. Those who love people. If you, are, you call yourself a Christian and you, know, you are not able to love people to... I mean, to show love in time of need, then you are those fake Christians 
those who live in hypocrisy, they live in pretense, they can also serve God, but the motive of service is for their own gain. That's how you know the wheat from the weeds. One of the examples that I want to talk about is, is those people who infiltrate themselves in the kingdom of God. They infiltrate themselves even in the system of serving God. But it doesn't matter how long they have been with the Lord. These people, they don't change. Despite the time that they spend with the Lord, they cannot change. They have their own interests. Even when they were for sure called by the Lord. This is an example of Judas. He was called by the Lord himself. But the time he spent with the Lord did not allow him to change. So the interest of Judas was just about money. So those people who are in the service, but with a wrong motive, those are definitely an image of weeds, weeds or tears. And another example I can show in the book of Acts of the Apostles uh, 13, verse 7 to 10, the Bible is telling us about this man who called himself a prophet, but he is a false prophet. His name is Bar Jesus, Bar Jesus, Elima the sorcerer. He called himself a prophet, but the prophecy he was giving was to be able to get money or to put people in the snare of his system. So there was a man, a proconsul, uh, Sergius Paulus. This is a very intelligent man, a prominent person who heard about the teachings of Jesus Christ. I'm so amazed to see that the Bible did not talk about the teachings of Paul and Barnabas, but the Bible is saying the teachings of Jesus Christ. So the apostolic teachings are the, apostol are the teachings that are based on Jesus Christ to reveal in everything we do, we reveal Christ. And what we are teaching is not our doctrine. So the apostolic doctrine is the teachings of Jesus Christ. It's as if Jesus is using my mind, my heart, and my body to reach you. So those teachings of Jesus Christ, those are the apostolic teachings that we are bringing to you. So when this um, by Jesus, Elima the sorcerer, when he saw that the proconsul called for Saul, who is Paul, and Barnabas, because he wanted to know about their doctrine. He wanted to hear about this teaching. So this man, in his mind, it was like, oh, I'm now missing this prominent person. So he resisted Paul and Barnabas. The Bible says he withstood them because he wanted to capture this man for himself and for his own benefit. So the Bible said that Paul looked intently at him. And because he had eyes to see the truth, the, the real from the fake, he understood that this is a son of the devil. This is a product of weeds. So he looked at him. He rebuked him. He said, you son of devil, son of prediction. He cast him. He said, you will not see the son again. And immediately the man became blind. blind. He became blind. And then he was now walking looking for someone who can give him direction because he could not see. And immediately the proconsul believed because the Bible says he was so shocked to see how God could operate because at his spiritual level, he could not know who is saying the truth. This calls himself a prophet. And Paul and Barnabas, they have the teaching. So which one is fake? Which one is the weed? Which one is... The wheat. 
So Jesus was trying to explain the kingdom of God by revealing the mysteries of the reality and the things that are not real. The people who are hip hypocrites, people who are there serving for their own interest probably, but they were not sent by the Lord. So we cannot appoint ourselves just to preach the word of God, to teach the word of God, to reach you on a television, unless God has sent us. So it's only when God calls you and sends you and gives you the assignment to teach to his people. And then the people themselves, they can reach the level on the maturity of seeing the fruit of the Spirit in you. Because in the next session, we'll also talk about uh, the, the, the fruit of destruction, the fruit of the devil himself. So we can see that in Galatians 5, from verse 19 to verse 22, we'll see the fruit of the Spirit, and then we'll see the fruit of flesh, the fruit of the evil spirit in the mind of people. That's why I said we need to sell even our mind because the, ma the carnal mind is full of things that cannot please God. So today, by listening to this session, you can detect where you are standing. Are you real, the wheat, weeds, or are you the real wheat that will produce harvest? The Bible says also that there will be a time of judgment. The time of judgment will be the time that those fake believers, those who are led by false doctrine, and those who are pagan and believers, the end time, they will be gathered in bundles and they will put fire. That's the last judgment. And the wheat, which are the good product, they will be the harvest of the Lord forever. God bless you. East Wind Ministries Seeking God